Imagination is the most powerful weapon which we can use to change the world. The dire need of us is to recognize the capacities and talents of the underprivileged people, provide education or employment and bring them to the mainstream. Yes, I mean to say that we need to eradicate poverty for the progress of our country. Salutations to the members of the jury. I am Srinivas with my teammate Samar Tess and Akash Kim of class 9 from Vijayavidara Vidya Shala Mysore. We would like to highlight and present the present data on begging class and find remedies to uplift them for better society. The father of our nation says poverty is the worst form of violence. Our main innovation is to gradually bring the begging class towards the mainstream and consider them one among us. What could be the reasons? There are many factors contributing for the people who are living below the poverty line. One among such reasons is begging. India ranks fourth in the begging in international level. It's a very pathetic scene to see the beggars in the road begging for arms. In spite of the verdict done by the Supreme Court that begging is prohibited, yet our country is facing a major constraint which is paralyzing the growth and the stability of the country's economy. The state and the central government have propagated many schemes to curtail begging and to enrobe them towards the mainstream. Yet it's not in the expected results. Our proposed project not only aims at the eradication of begging but also in reducing poverty and help the nation to become begging free nation and stabilized economy. Now my friend Akash will explain you about the status of beggars in India. Thank you, Srinivas. Let me highlight the status of beggars in India. According to the census 2011, there are 4,30,670 beggars, including 2,21,673 males and 1,91,997 females beggars. That number has increased from the last census. The present state shows the ranking of states by the beggars. Now I am going to reveal the opinion of beggars with the help of presentation. First comes to Sheila, her age is 39. She has not given any facilities from government and she is living in her temple premises. Next comes Nathesh. His age is 34 and he is getting 1000 rupees per month and in the form of pension. And he is ready to do any work and he is, he is also living in temple premises. Recently, the Supreme Court has agreed to examine a play of decriminalizing beggars which has been made a big offense in various states under the prevention of begging act. Now my friend Samar will explain about the working of the model. Thank you Akash. From the first, the beggars are grouped at a place and are given complete support and motivation to join our scheme. Then they are classified on the basis whether the candidate is under 18 or is the candidate included in the working population age that is 18 to 58 or is the candidate included in the 58 and above years. Then they are made into three groups, namely the education group, the major group and the senior citizen group. The education group consists of the people above 18 years of age. A Sanskrit quote says that That means that education plays an important role in one's life and offering it is as important. Likewise, the group education gives education to the people. Then, the wage employment and skill labors are the two groups for the working group. Here, they are given trained and they are given here for the contributing in the country's economy. There are many skills such as pottery, painting, weaving, tree climbing, farming and so on. The wage employment will have the people who are willing to work with construction and other works. Here is the static model representing it. The senior citizen group will have the people who are above 58 years and they will have the basic amenities of just food, cloth and shelter. The main objectives of this scheme is eradicating begging, reducing poverty, threatening self to earn livelihood and so on. The main innovation is that to re-channelizing the banking class towards the labor class and re-channelizing the youths engaged in banking towards employment. I would like to conclude by saying that the poor people who are engaged in banking are socially, economically and educationally deprived and they are going to get all these facilities by asking and they are going to be considered one among us. Thank you.